Prime. Joining me today is Katie McGinty, uh, Chief Sustainable Officer for Johnson Controls. Uh, great to have you here in India. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, you're here for the first time in 1999, you're back again here. You've worked both in the private as well as the public sectors in India. So what is the change in discourse from then and now around climate change? You know, back in the day, there were just really very few businesses that understood that the environment sustainability was a business opportunity. But now what I'm seeing is that sustainability has gone from the periphery to the heart and soul of strategic mission and opportunity. And so for Johnson Controls, that means we bring sustainable building technology to the fore that one cuts costs, two puts innovation to work, and three helps drive a business's strategy, even as we're tackling climate change. So my next question is about uh, Johnson Controls. Mm. Johnson Controls, uh, what does Johnson, can you talk us through what Johnson Controls does in India at this moment from both the point of view of building technology as well as sustainability? So we at Johnson Controls are privileged to have been in India now for 30 years and we lead our global operations from India. Okay. And so the trifecta of making buildings sustainable is efficient equipment, electrification, and digitalization. And both in terms of our engineering centers of excellence for the planet, we have built those centers here in India. And now data and digital platforms is the real revolution coming to buildings. And our software centers of excellence are also here in India. In this is an opportunity for India to capture a market in decarbonizing buildings that's going to be as big or bigger than renewable energy. So it's an exciting time. Okay. Uh, during the interaction that uh, you had some time ago, about mm -hmm. an hour ago or something, so you said that you have a tie-up with Accenture uh, in India, uh, if, you, if you want to expand on that. And secondly, you're saying that buildings contribute nearly 40% of the energy's world's energy emissions. So what is that big news in building technology mm. that is coming now and how are we try targeting net zero buildings? Mm. So with Accenture, we're able to work with companies and bring forward end-to-end -end solutions in terms of tackling carbon and putting organizations on a net zero journey. From the very front part of that conversation, which is understanding your carbon footprint, working through what should your goals and strategies be, to where Johnson Controls comes and we actually engineer your glide path okay. to that net zero outcome. And what that involves is two kinds of things. One, ripping out the old equipment that's inefficient and costing you a lot of money, mm -hmm. where you're wasting money on energy waste and putting the savings to work in our open blue digital platform that then takes your building from something now is just an inert mm. burden on your balance sheet, converts the building into essentially a battery okay. where the cooling system is mm. talking to the security system, okay. understanding there's no one on the fourth floor and stop blowing <laughs> to that yeah. floor. But increasingly where the building itself can talk to the electric vehicles, can mm. talk to the solar panels, talk to the electric grid, and then the building becomes a source of revenue mm. instead of just a source of cost. Got it. Uh, we are, there's, there's a dichotomy in a sense right now. We are seeing macroeconomic uncertainties, mm. which have relatively, there's a kind of a slowdown. Mm. But we also know for the next couple of decades, there's going to be a building boom. So what is your take on that? And how where, where does carbon neutrality or net zero fit in? in these dynamics? So in terms of the building boom that is very much expected here, it's part of the reason that India has such a ripe opportunity to lead in this space. In most of the world, almost 80% of the buildings that will be standing in 2050 mm. are already standing today. Okay. But in India, mm. almost 50% of the buildings that are needed for 2030 are yet to be built. Okay. And so India has the opportunity to put together the technology that drives efficiency and the software that can drive outsized performance mm -hmm. to be the solution to that 40% 
of greenhouse gases that are buildings. And I think, you know, the prime minister just yesterday, I think he's on to this with the amazing speech he gave about smart and sustainable cities. Mm -hmm. There's a business opportunity in bringing those solutions forward, certainly to use here in India, but then for India to be able to export to the world. So is Johnson Controls involved in any of the smart city projects in India at the moment? We are, okay. and we are very much involved on an individual building basis. Okay. So those buildings are economically efficient, energy efficient, and smart in cutting carbon emissions. Mm. But then even more in bringing the whole community together with smart systems that can help ensure security, can help smooth and ease traffic True. movements, yeah. bringing the entire community alive in a digital way um, to enhance livelihoods, make your experience more pleasurable, not stuck in traffic, yeah. but also um, sustainable from an emissions and economic point of view. Okay. You mentioned about the community. So we mm -hmm. don't talk about how sustainability works with inclusion as well. How, how do you marry the aspect of sustainability, climate change and inclusion at the same time? I mean, participation of women, participation of youngsters in, the, in that respect. So we're privileged to have a variety of facilities in every corner of India. And just the other day, I had the opportunity to visit our plants outside of Ahmedabad. Okay. And there... Uh, we wanted to discuss a lot about this Ahmedabad thing. So yeah, please yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Well, the, our Ahmedabad plant is um, one of our best um, in the world, frankly, in making air conditioning systems. Yeah. Uh, we just announced our global... Uh, room air conditioning system made, invented, and now built you know, in that plant outside of Aminabad. Also, uh, that center is home to our global engineering and development center. Okay. So the smarts happening to build better equipment for the world market uh, mm. is taking place there as well. But here is the best new addition okay. to our team and capabilities. Um, look, we looked and said, we want to have diversity in our workforce. And in particular, we'd love to see women be able to participate um, in our plants much more. And we learned as we went out into the villages, mm -hmm. women said, we'd love to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. We need um, child care. And so we built a nursery on the facility. Um, we need to be home at a certain time yeah. to make dinner. So we put transportation resources so that those women could continue to do what they needed to do on the home front. Uh, and now I'm very pleased to say that um, almost 30% of our new employees in that plant are women, and they are showing up with excellence in terms of their track record of being the most faithful and effective mm. employees. So we're fortunate to have them. They're making a huge contribution, okay. and together we are much stronger. Okay. Uh, during this visit to, uh, of yours to India, so you have had a lot of chat with business leaders, policy makers. Mm -hmm. So what has been the sense from them about their approach to sustainability, climate change in that respect? So I think that businesses are uh, quickly seeing mm -hmm. that sustainability has gone from a nice to have mm -hmm. to a must have and a business imperative. When you talk to leaders, they're knowing okay. that if you want to attract and retain the best talent, you have to be foot forward okay. on climate and sustainability. If you want to keep and grow your investor base, you have to be leading the pack in sustainability. Yeah. Yeah. And now the regulatory picture also means if you want to be on the right side of those regulations, you have to get an agenda here and get smart about sustainability, about ESG, about climate change. Now, India is a real leader in this respect as well, both in terms of offering the tools to economically cut emissions through things like the new energy conservation uh, amendment that has been just brought forward, but also in terms of bringing these issues to the boardroom the um, BRSR, the Business Responsibility and Sustainability Reporting Act, is a world leader in putting 
ESG environmental data on a par with financial data and having that data report it to the government and investors because the government recognizes that companies that are smart about climate are a better bet in terms of asset value today and into the future.